What you see here, of course, is the Mac Mini. I haven't opened it up yet. Uh, that's gonna come up in this video. It's the entry-level Mac Mini M1, and a lot of hype has been surrounding the M1 Silicon from Apple uh, since its debut this past fall. So I wanted to do a little bit of an experiment. Can this $699 product replaced my $3,100 MacBook Pro 16 from late 2019. And I'm hoping it can because that's a big price difference, but I want to see if this can keep up. Hey everybody, it's Andrew and this is the Mac Mini M1. Coming up. Now, while we take a look at the specs and the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Apple. I'm not being sponsored by Apple. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Apple is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Apple. Pricing starts at $699 US, but right now over at Amazon, you can get it for $669. For those interested, I'll put the link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And I went with the cheapest one that they make. That's the eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. And even that model has proven to be very good so far as we'll talk about performance in just a little bit. Now, of course, those that want the 16 gigabyte model with 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, that's on sale for $849. That's $50 off its normal asking price. Like any other mini PC, you'll have to bring your own keyboard, mouse or touchpad, and of course, a monitor. Now, I decided to pair this with the Dell Ultra Sharp 38 inch curved monitor. I wanna thank Dell for sending it over. Watch for a separate review very soon on it. It's an excellent one. You don't wanna miss it. But for those that are interested in purchasing it, link will be in the description below. But first, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now this is very typical Apple packaging, very premium, very high end. Now lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. We'll get to this in just a little bit. You get documentation along with the sticker, which is silver, which matches the Mac Mini's color. You also get your power cord. At 2.6 pounds or 1.2 kilograms, the Mac Mini M1 is actually pretty light and actually portable if you want to take it with you on the go. Now this is great where you have a separate location that already has a monitor and keyboard and mouse ready to go, but you need something portable. It's also great for hotel rooms and its slim profile is also great for a home theater PC. All the ports and connections are located on the back. You get your Ethernet port, two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, and two USB-A ports, along with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, it's nice having two Thunderbolt ports, but I wish it had two additional Thunderbolt ports like you get with the MacBook Pro 16. And it also would have been nice to have a SD card reader, especially if you're a content creator like myself who needs to transfer media from the camera to the PC. And forget about upgrading the RAM and SSD yourself. Like most Macs, you cannot do it. And speaking of the SSD, the 256 gigabyte included in my unit actually did pretty well on the reads and writes. Now, of course, this doesn't come with any of the things you need to get up and running. That means you'll need to bring your own keyboard, your own mouse or touchpad, and you'll also have to bring your own monitor. Speaking of the monitor, I'm going to use this with the all new Dell Ultra Sharp 38 inch curved monitor. It's a USB-C monitor with a hub on the back and it's absolutely gorgeous. I want to thank Dell for sending it over for me to check out. And do yourself a favor and get a good pair of speakers to attach to this because the one that's included is pretty anemic. It sounds low, tinny, and there's no bass. All right, let's talk about the performance here. And we're looking at a $699 product versus, say, something like my MacBook Pro 16, which cost me over $3,000 or more like $3,100. And it was outperformed by the Mac Mini M1 and the Geekbench single-core and multi-core scores. 
It also outperformed the MacBook Pro 16 and the single-core score of the Cinebench R23. However, the MacBook Pro 16 outperformed the Mac Mini M1 when it came to the multi-core score, that at 8243 versus 7729. But again, very comparable performance in that regard. Now, these are amazing numbers when it comes to those synthetic benchmarks. But my big question is, how will it do in real world usage? And more specifically for me, how will it do in Final Cut Pro? And the answer, it did amazing. It took half the time to render a 4K 30 frames per second video in ProRes 422. It took 16 minutes versus the 32 minutes that my MacBook Pro 16, which has a discrete AMD Radeon Pro GPU, as well as that Core i9. So it's simply amazing in terms of the sheer power power and numbers that this can perform and again $699 device versus a $3,100 device simply amazing but that is not the whole story ladies and gentlemen I ran into a snag now I use a lot of motion VFX plugins for Final Cut Pro and it turns out there a lot of them are not compatible with the Apple Silicon at least not yet and that is a deal breaker for me since I use a lot of these graphics on my videos so for now I can't use the Mac Mini any M1. Now, this situation is very specific to my use case scenario, but for most people, they won't have that issue because they're probably not doing video editing on Final Cut Pro with those plugins, but it is something to be aware of that compatibility issues may be something you have to deal with. Things like consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube have been simply amazing with this device. No stuttering, 4K video shown in its full frame rates. Everything is looking good. I didn't see any drop frames. Again, performance has been excellent. So for the general consumer, you're going to love this Mac Mini M1. Now, this M1 chip, as we know, is very energy efficient. It also runs very cool and very quiet. I didn't hear the fans kick in very much. It's very quiet, and that is a very good thing. So at the end of the day, can this Mac Mini M1, which costs $699, replace my $3,100 MacBook Pro 16? And the answer for me personally is no, it cannot, simply because of compatibility issues with certain graphics plugins for Final Cut Pro. But that's a very specific issue for my use case scenario. But for most people, the Mac Mini M1 will be simply amazing. And that's why I'm going to give this a score of 93%, making the Mac Mini definitely worth your money. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.